Okay, 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 okay. So before I begin anything, let me just greet everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Okay, I hope I find you well today. So today I'm presenting on Java abstraction, and this is group five presentation. And to begin with, we're going to talk about the these aspects here. What is abstraction in Java? Why do we need abstraction? Uh, implementation of abstraction using abstract keywords, implementation of abstraction using interface, and then we're going to do the limitations or drawbacks of abstraction. So let's just go to the next slide. Uh, OK. Our first topic is what is abstraction in Java? I just gave two definitions. So the first one is the simple def definition so that I guess everyone can easily understand this definition. Abstraction in Java, it is a concept of hiding complex implementation details. In brackets, how an object do things. And only exposing the essential information of an object. I guess I missed something here. What the object does. So when we are doing abstraction, we are just hiding some of the information that is not essential to the user. So only information that is essential to the user will be exposed to the user. That is the only information that the user is allowed to see. So I think the concept is a bit similar to encapsulation, though they are different. So another definition, it is a concept in object-oriented programming that allows you to create abstract classes and interface to represent common characteristics and behaviors of related objects while hiding their implementation details. Here, it's just the same, it's just one and the same thing, but um, it's just that this definition is a bit advanced than the previous one. So I just gave an example here, like in a TV remote control, remote control provides a simplified interface for the user to interact with the TV without needing to understand the details on how the, the details of how the TV functions internally. I guess almost everyone knows the television and the remote control, like how these two things relate to each other, right? So in this example, the remote control, each and everyone will need a remote control to perform each task he or she might need to do on the television. That is why the television comes with the remote control. So the remote control abstracts away the complex inner workings of the TV. So you will not need to open the television so that you, I don't know, spark the wires in order to display a, a movie or what, but you just use a remote control. You will not know like what the remote control is doing inside, but you just see that if you press a button on the remote control, you will see a response on the television, but you will not know how these things interact internal. That is sort of abstract abstraction. So these are the two aspects in this example, like abstract abstraction and simplified interface. So in this example, I just said remote control abstracts away the complex inner workings of the of the TV. The user don't need to know the circuit, the secretary signal processing or how the TV produces sound ETC. That is the same, the same thing that I've explained earlier. 
So on the second aspect of simplified interface, the remote provides the limited number of buttons, e.g. the power button, volume up or down, channel plus or channel minus. These buttons represent the essential functions the user needs to control the television. This is just the same and the one and the same thing with what I was explaining earlier. So let's just move to the next slide. If anyone, if no one has a question about this. I guess no one mm -hmm. has got a question. So let me just move forward. So why do we need abstraction? Like the reasons for abstracting our classes and our objects. Example. So the first point here is to provide clear and simplified view of the complex systems by focusing on the essential characteristics and behaviors while hiding the unnecessary implementation details. So like in the interface, the interface aspect that I've said before, we will be seeing a remote, right? So by seeing a remote, we will be hiding the complex systems. We'll be hiding the complex systems of the television in the remote. We'll be just focusing on the essential details, essential characteristics and behaviors, like the characteristics, like if you press a volume up, the volume will just go up. We don't need to know like how did this thing happen or why, right? So this is just an explanation of the point. So another point is it promotes um sorry, I guess my grammar has a bit has been a bit lost here. It allows achieving code modularity and reusability. I think by code modularity, we're just trying to say uh, our code will be just in form of modules, like form of pieces, sort of, and reusability. It's like what we have done in our code, we can use those information or that information throughout the code that that reusing the the code code reusability. Uh, abstraction helps in managing the complexity, managing making code more flexible, extensible, and easier to understand and maintain. Yeah, when we use abstraction, um, Just self explanatory. Our codes will be just easy to maintain and easier to understand just because, in form of modules, you can you can read each module by itself and you can easily understand what will be going on within the code. So, another point is it allows developers to work at the higher levels of abstraction, emphasizing on what the object does rather than how it does it. So, as the developers will be working on the application or on the code that will help to solve a certain problem, they will be just focusing on like the information on what the object does or what the application does, right? They will be not focusing on how the object does things. They will abstract that information from the user just because the only the only thing that is necessary for the user is what the object does or what the application does, right? So that is it. And the next point is it enhances security by abstracting the implementation details. The implementation details, I think, in in general, it's like Take for example, uh, mm -hmm. your cell phone, like your cell phone. 
when your cell phone was being made, the technicians or the people who made this, who made that phone, they, they have some of the complex details within that phone that are being abstracted from you, that are being hidden from you. So most of the people, for example, the elderly, they don't have that. See, what you what can say, what you call it, some scans while you go for my phone. I know some of us like we can open our phones and stuff, but uh, most of the people don't do such a thing. So they don't even know what is inside that phone. So if it is like they don't, they didn't provide the covers and the screens so that you only operate on the screen, you need to touch the wires and stuff. You will be tempering with the like secretary. Uh, with the motherboard and stuff. So that should be, that phone or that thing will be prone to security issues. Just because anytime you, anytime it is prone to, to the problems, like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, I don't know if there is anyone with a question or I can just go on to the next slide. Can proceed, sir. Hello? I can proceed. Yes. Yes, you can proceed. Okay, so let me just proceed. Then, uh, how to achieve abstraction? Like, implementation of abstraction. So uh, in abstraction, in Java, we can, uh, we can achieve abstraction in only two ways, using abstract classes and interfaces. So using abstract classes, uh, let me just define an abstract class. Abstract classes are classes that can be instantiated in sets as, as a blueprint for its subclass. So an abstract class is like a parent class that is declared with an abstract keyword, but that abstract class cannot be instantiated. By instantiated, I, I think uh, it cannot be, we cannot create an object from an abstract class, but it serves as a blueprint for its subclass. I think everyone will understand when you go to the point. So it can include both abstract and concrete methods by Abstract methods, abstract methods are, the, are, are those methods without a body. Sorry, I didn't include any of the links of any of the examples, but you can just write it down. OK, I, I, I think on this one we have enough uh, and uh, we have enough on what we need. What is an abstract class? Uh, maybe the concept of abstraction as well as um, Maybe what well, maybe what you want now is the demonstration. Maybe what you want now is the demonstration, and then maybe you can tell us uh, on the issue of uh, the abstract methods. You can demonstrate. You can give an example on your IDE while you are coding there, and then you can tell us this is uh, the the abstract method because it have got this this this. Maybe that's what you are anchoring uh, for now. So you can just do that. Just do the demo so that we can move on to the next uh, presenter. There, just to move on to the uh for the demonstration phase okay 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 so let me just open my ide here also the the why do we need it the why do we need it is also very important take note of that why do we need abstraction in op okay
I think I've just explained some of the points before, right? Eh? Yeah, you have explained. Just okay. do the demo. Just do the demonstration. Okay. So. Sorry, my ID is a little bit of loading line. I haven't opened it any time. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so let me just create a new a new file here. New object, new project I mean. New project, I'll just call it uh, animal or presentation. Then And I'm creating a new class and I'll call it animals. Yeah, so within this class, sorry, I have to alter this and make it abstract. And then let me just make a abstract method. And then
in a new kingdom. Last year, I found you to know so to the not to more missing. Hello? But, but can you see the time the members needed you most you were hiding, but why? That's fine. But, yeah. I uh, think my code is showing some errors but i think i will is it not the return type of the method in the abstract class animals there you didn't put the return type just said the uh, abstract to make sound Eight. is it a void or is it okay 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 so yeah thanks thanks it's a void Okay, then let me just create a main class.
are you seeing that or inside the Kate class? You have actually created another <coughs> method for the make sound if you, and it is taking an argument there. If you look at that method, it has got no board, so it's supposed to be an abstract method. So I don't know hey, which yeah. is which. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So remove the term, also remove the termination at the end just below the you need to yeah. remove that termination. Mm -hmm. Also, it needs to have uh, it's for it also taking an argument, which means it's no longer the method that you are. Uh, the, which is in a class in a class mm -hmm. animal because it's taking an argument but the one in, in animal class is not taking an argument there yeah now you are overriding that method mm This one. Yes. Okay. Hey, let me try that one. Ah, no. Wait. Okay, let me just take this. So here we have just created our abstract class. Here we have just created our abstract class called animals. So um, this abstract class is containing an abstract uh, method called void make sound, called, called make sound. This is this method make sound in an abstract class is also abstract and is not taking is not is not implementing any board so the subclasses that are extending from the our main class animals which is dog and cat they should override the methods the of, of the abstract the abstract methods within the main class, right? Within the super class. So by overriding them, they are taking that same method, but they are implementing their own boards on that method. That's how they are overriding the method in the super class. So let me the in our our main main method i have just created another class here called main so that we we can test our our program here so we've just created a new object but when we created this new object we didn't use the abstract class to create we just used it as a reference to the subclasses these animals is used is being used as a reference to the subclasses dog we have just said it here when creating new object and kids just uh, just like here so we've we are just calling our method, this one. We're taking our, our object from the dog class that is that we have created in the dog class. 
which is jog. And we are calling our method make sound this one. But we are calling our method make sound this one. But since we are using this one as a reference to this one, this board is going to be executed. This is the board that is going to be executed. So when we run our program, we are expecting to see this as output. Woof in this one as output as well. So let me just try to do that and see what will happen. Just like what we are seeing here is what we what I've been explaining is what I've been talking about. We are seeing woof and mu. In these classes, a dog is making its sound and a cat is making is also making its sound just because we cannot instantiate the super class, the abstract class. So I think on abstract class, that is it. And so is there any question here? Yes. My question is direct to say. Hello. Uh, hello, my hey, you can go. Is how do you write this main Java in exam situation? Do you write in separate sheet or just write on this on same sheet with our abstract? Okay, okay. I think it's just the way you want to do it. If it is practical or if you are just writing it on a paper, it's just the, the same. Here, here, here you can create separate classes like, like each class on its own file. Or you okay. can have all or you can have all those classes, maybe four classes, five classes, or any number of classes on the same file. Like if you look at that one, you've got the dog, uh, the, the kid, and the animal class in the same file. So you can also have the same main file, that main file. In the same what in the same way with all those classes, it's just doable there. Okay, so thank you. Oh, on, only that, only that. If they are on the same file, that file we only have one class with the public uh, as the access modifier. Public class will be only one if they are on the same file, so that it can actually pick the one with the main method. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so I think uh, uh, this one is enough on abstraction. Can we have the next presenter? Because uh, we are now almost uh, on maybe on 40 minutes or so, if it is not 35 minutes. So do it quickly, please. I want the group six to come in, so do it quickly. Okay. So let's make sure that our mic on mute, uh, on mute and we turn to off our cameras. I don't know, Brighton said, is it not your camera on? I don't know what's happening there. The next presenter, quickly share your slides. So new Dakara, who is going to present next, Dakara? Who is going to present next? Our, our next presenter is going to be Panashi. Panashi, I don't know if he is in here. I uh, need to confirm with him because uh, uh, we are waiting for him. Just trying to get in touch with him right now, but he's not responding. So in other, so in other words, he's not around. Okay, group six. Are you there? You can quickly show your slide. If we do not have anyone to present on threads, because that was your core topic. Yeah, we do say we do. 
So if you can, you can present because it doesn't make sense for us to wait for someone who is not around. Okay, maybe. Ah, okay, let me just try to take it over. Uh, and do it quickly because you cannot wait. Okay, so. Yeah, I do not have much time today, so I want it to be quick. Otherwise, you cut uh, when I feel I need to go. Okay, so here we are just jumping over to trading in Java. Let me just try to maximize my screen. So, just welcome to Java Threading and let me just go to the next slide. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. This is it. So our introduction is on why do we use threads? Why do we use threads in Java? There are many reasons to use threads in Java programs. If you use like ID, ID is like swing, it's just a, it's just a, just any introduction, a basic introduction. So some of the reasons for using threads in Java is just that they help us to make the user interface more responsive. They help us to take advantage of the multiprocessor system since most of our systems here are based on multiprocessors. Our modern pieces here uh the complex of multiprocessors so we can take it take advantage of those multiprocessors and utilize them in a way that can benefit ourselves so it simplifies modeling performs sync asynchronous and background processing so sorry Let me just get a quick introduction. Every Java program is at least one thread, the main thread. When a program, when a Java program starts, the JVM creates the main thread and calls the program main method within that thread. The JVM also creates the creates other threads that are more invisible to you, meaning say to us. For example, threads associated with garbage collection, object finalization, and any other JVM housekeeping tasks. Other facilities create methods too, create, sorry, create threads too, such as AWT, that's abstract windowing toolkit, and swing user interface toolkits, servlet containers, applications, some of, the th some of these things we are not being, we are not using them like, Right now, they are they are just facilities that are being used in the real world, in the real programming, not for educational purposes. So let me just move to the key terminology in this presentation. So let me just define trading. Trading is a facility to allow multiple activities to coexist within a single process. It's like multiple activities, like multiple tasks to coexist within a single process. For example, um, we are running, let me, let me say, just like what I'm doing on this PC, what I'm doing on this PC, I'm sharing this screen, right? At the same time, um, a few, few, few minutes ago, I was just doing something in the background. Like I was, I was coding in the IDE, sort of multitasking in the same process, right? So, okay, what is a process? A process is an instance of a running program which may consist of one or multiple threads. A process is an instance of a running program, which may consist of one or multiple threads. I think this one can be understood by everyone. So what is a thread? I just see, I just, I just defined the process so that you cannot confuse it 
with a thread. So a thread is a lightweight or smallest unit of execution. This is a smallest unit of execution normally is found within a process. That is the difference between a process and a thread. A thread is found within a process. It's a smallest unit of execution. So another definition, it is a self-contained sequence of instructions that can execute in parallel with other threads that are part of the same root process. As we are saying, it's by saying a self-contained sequence of instructions, it can contain its own variables, its own um, its own, yeah, for example, its own variables. So each thread is, is got its own variables, but it can execute in parallel with other threads that are part of the same root process. So there are these threads which are in the same process. They are only threads that can run in parallel, that can execute in parallel. So let me just move to the next slide. And we are trying to understand threads. The concept of threading in Java refers to the ability to create and manage threads of execution within a Java program. Java ex explicitly include threading within the language itself rather than threading as a facility of the underlying operating system. We are just trying to say threading now can be included within the Java itself as a language rather than in the, within the operating system. So, and the threads are sometimes referred to as lightweight processes just like we defined a thread before, a thread lightweight process. So like processes, threads are independent, concurrent parts of execution through a program, and each thread is its own stake, its own program counter, and its own local variables, just like what, we are, what I was saying before. However, threads within a process are less insulated from each other than separate processes are. They share memory, file handles, and other resources. We're just saying, since we've said uh, some threads are found within a process, like we can find more than one thread within, a, within the same processes, within, a, within the same process, these threads are being are less insulated from each other. It's like they are not, they cannot hide from each other, like because they share the same memory, they share the same, the same processes, and they share other resources. And in Java, threads are represented by the Java dot language thread class. This is just a package that that is that represents threads in Java. So let me just move forward. So like, in other words, so in other words, we are just saying we have got a process and that process is made up of what of threads. Yeah. And yeah, and those and those threads they work together to, to perform that task which is supposed to be performed by that process. So they work together so they cannot hide from each other. They work together, they share uh, the information so that they can execute that specific task that we want a process to execute, just like that. Yeah, you, you, you can, you can, you, 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 you can proceed. Yeah, just like what our lecturer was saying, as you can see, this is process one. It contains thread A, thread B, and thread C. These threads, they work together so that they accomplish a they accomplish some tasks that are supposed to be done with this process. And this is process three, it has got two threads, and process two, is it has got a single thread. So all these things are, are being found within the process. And the process is in the operating system, right? So, let me go to the next 
Just like an Ombona article, I'm Katamana FIFA and I will not go on the graphics rogue on our sticker, but sound you to run by stop play. If we thought about that, was this nation by like you are playing a game and then the graphics just got stuck, but the sound you keep on playing. It's just was maybe the trade with a red graphics on Dora to stack, but trade just the sound, the sound ready to play. So it's like we have a, a thread which will be actually working on graphics, and have a thread which will be working on, on sound, and all those threads will be in sync. Kind of stuff, kind of stuff, kind of stuff, they will be in sync. Everything will be going well. But if something happens there, maybe we thread right now, and then we will not punish you, such stop play, but it's the same, it's same process. But just because it's actually separated into threads, that will might happen there. You yeah. can you can proceed. Okay, let me just proceed. So <clears throat> we cannot talk about trading without talking about multi trading. So multi trading it just enables concurrent execution of threads, allowing different parts of the program to run simultaneously, sharing system resources and executing tasks in the in parallel. So just like what say was talking about like a thread that is supposed to handle graphics and a process and a thread that, that is supposed to handle sound, they work together so that they accomplish a pro, they accomplish a task of enabling you playing the games. Right? So multi-threading, that is multi-threading. We have got more than one thread working hand in hand so that they accomplish a certain task that is more trading. So we've got uh, some key aspects of more trading, some key aspects of more trading. So there's communication and synchronization. Threads of often need to communicate and synchronize with each other. This can be achieved through mechanisms like logs, conditions, semaphores, barriers, message passing, this allows to coordinate their activities and share data safely. Just like say, what was say, saying? He was saying these threads they communicate. A thread that is supposed to carry out a task for graphics, and that one which is supposed to carry out a task for producing sound, they need to communicate so that when acquiring some resources. They don't, they don't cause data collision and they don't cause some problems when acquiring that data and the, those resources. So another aspect, key aspect on multi trading is concurrence. The ability of multiple threads to, to access the shared resources at the same time, right? The thread, uh, like, a graphics thread and a sound thread, the, their ability to acquire a shared resource, for example, they need to acquire storage like RAM, they need to acquire RAM at the same time. So that ability is called concurrence. So another aspect is parallelism, involves dividing a task into subtasks that can be executed concurrently. Parallel threads execute different parts of the task simultaneously, potentially speeding up computation in computation intensive and time consuming operations. So by parallelism, we are just dividing a task into subtasks that can be executed concurrently. So this is just this just, just goes back to the example that was given. We are breaking down the, the task of playing a game, like showing on the screen and allowing the, the functionalities, like moving the characters and stuff. So that task is being divided and 
that the subtasks that are that are created from a divided task are assigned to different threads that is called and they can be executed at the same time that is parallelism then another key aspect is shared resources yeah threads within within the process share system resources such as memory we have just explained this let's just not waste the time and thread safety when we talk about thread safety we are just saying since thread threads share memory and resources it is crucial to ensure thread safety thread safety thread safe programming involves synchronizing access to shared data to share data structures and resources to prevent data races, deadlocks, and other concurrent related issues. When programming, we must ensure thread safety. So, by ensuring thread safety, we are minimizing the concurrent problems like data races, deadlocks, and concurrent related issues. We will explain this later on in the presentation. Let me just move forward to the next slide. And what are the benefits of trading in Java? The benefits of trading in Java, the efficient use of more of multi-processor codes. Just like what I what I've said earlier, like our PCs now are comprised of multi-processors, multi-processor codes. For example, from my own understanding, I think that's when we say this is draw code, this is quite three, quite five, they've got multi processor codes. So, by using trading, we can efficiently utilize those processors to execute tasks. So, utilizing multiple CPU codes and reducing overall execution time, like what we commonly see, what we normally say. A draw core is a bit slower than Core 5 Core 7 and stuff. That's I think that is the concept that is being tried to be explained here. And another benefit is responsiveness. User interface responsiveness. Sorry. User interface responsiveness. Threading allows for background tasks while keeping the main application responsive. Uh, let me try to find a suitable example for this. Mm. Okay, so let me just give an example of okay, what I can say. I'm sorry, I am not being able to find the, 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 the real life example of this one. So I don't know if anyone can find me a, an example, a real-time, a real-life example that can explain this responsiveness. Yeah, I think no one even can do that. So let me just move forward. Um, another benefit is enhanced scalability. Thread-based parallelism enables efficient utilization of available system resources. This is a direct translation benefit, direct translation um, point. So there is asynchronous operations. Threads can handle time-consuming operations without blocking the main program flow. This is particularly useful in scenarios where an application needs to perform time-consuming operations such as network requests, file input, output, or database queries. By offloading these tasks to separate threads, the main thread can continue executing other operations, ensuring a smooth user experience. I think everyone is understanding what is trying to be meant here. So um, let me just continue with the benefits, with the benefit, with the benefits. Another benefit is improved program or game performance. Yeah. It allows for parallel task execution, enabling different parts of the application 
to run concurrently. For example, a mode facing real time shooter game allows each player to interact with the program simultaneously. The players do not take turns as they do in older board games such as chess. Like what our lecturer is saying, when playing FIFA, um, have you ever seen that all characters will be in motion? All characters will be in motion despite your controls. So this is the operation of trades. This is the operation of trades. They don't need to take turns like when you move your finger, like the joystick forward, only one character will go forward and you have to change your you have to change your case to another character so that you can move forward or what. They just move concurrently, they move at the same time. So another benefit is responsive and user experience. In applications such as games or interactive software, responsiveness is crucial for providing a smooth and immersive user experience, multi three user experience, sorry. Uh, Multi-trading is also important for an online stores such as Amazon. For example, you want to browse the available products, read product reviews, place selections in your basket, and pay for your products without taking turns with all other people simultaneously shopping at the, at the site. So user experience, it improves user experience. You don't have to wait so that another user who is shopping online on Amazon you have to complete his or her shopping so that you can go on and log into the application because just because it's an online application, right? So you don't need to wait for him or her to complete his shopping or your shopping so that you can do your shopping as well. You can do that at the same time. That is responsiveness and user experience. Even though trade seem to give numerous benefits, they may also come with some limitations such as Synchronization over it and some potential issues such as risk conditions and deadlocks. Let's just get into the limitations and see what is there. Uh, in the limitations, we are talking about the risk conditions. We've just said when multiple threads, sorry, we've just explained that when implementing trading. We have to ensure trade safety so that we minimize the problems, the concurrent problems, right? So these problems, these conditions, right, they're right there. They are being the results of poor implementation or poor implementation of trade safety. So let me just define risk conditions. Risk conditions is the, is the situation where processes using shared memory do their work, own work at the wrong time and data is corrupted or and data is corrupted. This is called a risk condition, which happens to have the following issues. So a risk condition is got the following issues such as live logs, data corruption, dead logs, and the likes. So let's just hear what live logs are saying. Where two or more processes or threads are blocked and unable to make progress, but constantly changing their state in response to changes made by other processes or threads without making any real progress towards completing their task. That is a live log. Uh, let me try to find an example so that I can make it clear. For example, <clears throat> let, let's just take an example of a, a, a bank entrance. A bank entrance, right? So, in a bank entrance, right, one, only one person can get inside. And the other one, sorry, let me just take an example of like 
a corridor or a passage. Two people are coming from different sides and they just meet within a corridor. So the first person decides to go to go right. And the other one, they just think at the same time to go on the same direction. They cannot cross each other just because they are on, they are going to the same direction. Their path is locked by each other. So they cannot make any progress, but they are moving. The one decides to move to the right side, and the other one facing side, the other one facing decides to move to the left. So they are going to the same side. So they cannot cross. And they just think, oh, this one is going to this side. So I have to just go this side. And they just keep doing that. They will keep doing that until then. But they don't even make any progress. But they are moving. They are alive. They, they know they are moving just because they are making actions, but they are not heading anywhere. That is a life log. So data corruption. When multiple, when multiple threads or processes are trying to access the same resource at the same time, it is possible for them to override each other's data leading to data corruption. Like, um, okay, so I didn't, I didn't prepare for this, for this, uh, this example. So let me just skip it. But I think you've understood what I was trying to say by data corruption. So let me just go to deadlocks. On the issue of data corruption, it's just like you are having a thread uh, which you have got access to the same data. Maybe the time of reading and then the time of writing there. So maybe the other thread wants to use the data from another thread being uh, manipulated, ma manipulated by another thread. So if, it, if, if a certain thread read that data before maybe another thread actually arrives to that data, maybe it can read a corrupt uh, data and try to use that data. And then it, it went on to produce a wrong result there. Just like maybe we've got a, a, an account that maybe for two people we have got access to that account. Someone can actually inquire the balance and then see that there is a twenty dollars there that I can spend and start to load your trolley with something so that you can actually go to the chill. But at the same time, maybe there is also someone who have got access to that account and requested and so that there is twenty dollars and then actually withdrawn all the amount. And then when you are on the two, you are trying to access that and then you see that there is nothing in the in in, in the account. Something like that. So that's some sort of data corruption. You are reading something and you are trying to use it. But maybe you are using the wrong data. I'm sure I've done that on the database side there. Yeah. Just like that. And then on the deadlocks, I think it's just simple and straightforward. There. You want to you want to read, uh, there are threads which want to access the data and maybe they want to access the same data there and they want to operate on that data. So maybe you are, they want to acquire some locks there so that they can operate on that data. So maybe the one if got the log for the data that it want to use, but it's waiting for other data to be released so that it can use that. And then the other thread is where it's waiting for the log which is actually held by that thread, which is waiting for the lock, which is being held by that thread. So in other words, all those, they always in wait because this one has got a lock, but it doesn't have a lock for the other data. So it's waiting for that. And then the other thread also have got some locks which are required by that by, by the other thread, but it's actually waiting to get some other locks there. And then they, well, they, they end up, on only what only what you call a dead a, a dead lock, just like that. And then there are some recovering mechanism, but you are not going to talk about them in this uh, module. Maybe when you are doing uh, operating system, that's where you you will be talking about how can you recover from a dead lock. But that's what you call a dead lock, just like that. I think you can proceed. Okay, thank you, sir, for the clarity there. And let me just keep moving. So. There is something called starvation. Starvation occurs when a process is unable to get the resources it needs 
to make progress, even though the resources are available. A process cannot, a trade, sorry, a trade is unable to get the resources, it needs to make progress, even though the process, the resources are available. In other words, the process is blocked or delayed indefinitely, unable to complete its work. So I just gave an example, like imagine you are in a restaurant waiting to be saved, but the waiter is saving only a few customers who have been VIPs. You and other customers are hungry and waiting for your food to arrive. VIPs are prioritized, but you starve even though the required resources are available, food and waiters for you to get some, some food that you want for you to get satisfied. So it's just that you are being deprived from getting the resources, even though the resources are, are available, just because they are being directed or prioritized to the most important people or to the most important trade or tasks that are available. For example, uh, for example um, sorry, you can, let me just, there is a, let me say, a heavy process in your, in your PC. There is a heavy process in your PC and you are trying, for example, in a Eclipse, you are trying to open Eclipse, just, that's just like what I was doing. You are trying to open Eclipse and you are trying to open Wait at the same time. So the, I don't know if it is the processor that determines which one is important first. So for example, all of them, they want to access, um, they want to access the RAM. So I think based on my understanding or my level of thinking, more storage, or more space is going to be allocated to the Eclipse just because that is the heavier process. And your PC is going to delay to open uh, if you want to open some like your weights, it's going to delay to open that weight. So memory is being allocated to the important task before it is allocated. So if that task continues to require that memory. And that memory cannot be, is not enough to save the weight. The weight is not going to open or to do anything before the Eclipse completes what is intended to do. I think that is it from my own understanding. So let me just move forward. So uh, these are just examples. So we've just gone through it. So we are just going to the creation of threads. Threads are created in two common ways, which are thread class and a runnable inter interface. So a thread class, when creating methods, so when creating threads using thread class, firstly, you need to create a class that extends the thread class. This is the subclass that will represent your thread and define its behavior. So step number two, you need to override the run method in your subclass. And step number three, Sorry, the run method contains the code that will be executed when the thread starts. The run method contains code that will be executed when the thread starts there. So from there, we go on to the step number three, that is instantiate your class and start the thread by calling the start method. This will, be instantiate, this will instantiate the execution of the run method on separate threads. So there is something to note here that is by calling start, the JVM creates a new thread 
and invoke run method on that thread. The code within the run method will run concurrently with the main method or any other threads in the application. So let's just go on to the next one. That is the runnable interface. On the runnable interface, the first step is to create a class that implements the runnable interface. This will represent your class, your thread behavior. Step number two, implement the run method from the runnable interface. The run method contains the code that will be executed when the thread starts. And then step number three, we'll create an instance of our class implementing runnable. Then step number four, create a thread object. Passing your runnable instance in the constructor. But I think there is a way you cannot use a constructor here in our exam. So let me just open my IDE and try to share the code. Okay, so let me stop sharing and open this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So let me create a new project, create a new project. Oh, yeah, let me just try to create a new project. <laughs> okay, so let me just create a thread here. Uh, drink water, can you make sure that you turn off your camera? I think it's drink water. Just turn off your camera. Okay, so
Uh, Dakala, you are on mute. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. I haven't, I haven't noticed that one. So, here yeah, I'm just trying to create our test class so that we can test our thread if it is running. So, let me just say this test class. So, if it is a class, remove that void. Okay, okay, sorry, thanks. Mm, we are creating a new object. I think I left something. Yeah, I left something. I left something. So let me just include. Hello? Public test. Is it not public class test? Yeah, that's public class test. Thank you. And this one is supposed to or to the next class. Eh? Why can't you put in that class? I'm sure, it, like, I'm sure you can still can, but the only thing is that uh, maybe it's just because the there is the public class thread there, so you cannot just put it, so you just put it in only a different class, it's okay. And that is the thread class wasn't supposed to be public for it to be there. The thread class was sub wasn't supposed to be public. So, uh, so if you want to put the test class inside that class, you need to remove the public keyword on the thread class. Okay. So let me just try to do that. And then you can create a class just to, at the end. At the after end. The, after the after the last block of the yes, you can you can paste your your class there like this. And then you need to rename the the class the 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 file is where it's thread dot java. It's now supposed to be test dot java. Sorry, can you remove that one? 
e, ukaenda pakanzi public class test hapo kuma shule kuna ichi era kuna ichi flag che era if you go hey. there click that one if you click that one just click rename file Yes, it will, re, it will rename the file. Just click that, double click that one. Yes, it will rename the file. It is It must rename the file to click that again. Yes, click the rename. I think it's not responding. Uh, so, so do it the other way around. I'm sure if I'm going to rename the file and then he, it will be good to go. Okay, maybe it's just an issue with my combiner, I think. Also, the thread class you have actually already implemented in Java. Maybe we're supposed just to import it and then use it. And I think there's no need to import it on threads. I'm sure you can just use it directly there. You can actually start by creating the thread objects. Like, where exactly are you saying? Here we are creating uh, an object for my my thread class. Where did my, you create that class? I'm my thread class, that. this one. Oh, OK, OK, that one, it's yeah. OK. And then you are trying to access which method? The method I'm trying to access, uh, I'm trying to access this method. Which one? This one. OK, so, so, how, do you, so how do you access that? Just because this, this method has been overridden here. Yeah. Eh, so if I try to access this one, this, one, this method is going to be this is the method, this is the block that is going to be executed. Okay, it's okay. Just to do it. I am just curious. Now, <laughs> on how you are going to do it. That's why I'm asking. Uh, me... Yeah, uh, just like what I have said, I have, uh, I just tried to access this method. And just because this method is overridden here by this method, this method was, is, this method was displayed. This block was executed in our main method. This is the block that has been executed just because it overrides this method that we called from our super class, our thread class. So to so which one is your thread now? Was there a demonstration on how you can create a thread? Which one is your thread now? Okay, the the that's the way I left some of the some of the information within within the, the, the classes. So let me just try Co to cause do. cause cause the thread one if got some methods uh, that you are supposed to run for you to run the run method you don't need to actually call it directly you need to call the thread you need to start the thread and then the thread you know what to do it will run the run method on its own yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay that's yeah. what you're supposed to do so you can remove the class thread there it was actually already implemented in java so what you just need is to extend that thread class this one you can remove you can remove it completely and you do not still have any error if, if you are looking at it why because the thread class have actually already implemented in java it's already there what you just need to do is just to use it and the thread class the one we which have got the run method right so we are saying if you want to implement a thread in java you need you can imp implement it through inheriting its methods from the thread class 
And then after that, you need to make sure that you customize the run method so that it will do the task that you want it to do. So you can have many threads, maybe 30 threads, 1,000 threads, but you need to make sure that every thread we have its own running method so that every thread we do its own, we do its own task. So you can have the my thread class there, and then you can create the objects of the my thread class there. Those methods are those, or you'll be creating actually threads by create by creating those objects. You'll be creating those threads. If you want to run them, you use the start method. If you call the start method, it will just start to not it will just start to run, but it will be waiting for it to be allocated the CPU time so that it will execute its run method. And once it finishes uh, its run method, it will actually completed the task that you actually gave it. So it will just only run the, the running method till it is completed. So now you can go on to the test method, maybe uh, on, on the test class the on the test class, you can go to test class. And if you look at that test class, you can remove the run method there and then you can say obj1 dot start. Yes, you can remove the, the dot and then you start to press the dot. It will give you the methods that you can use within that object. Then you can, if you try to type start there, I'm sure, or just put S. Ah, uh, sure. this photo. It is dot of what is. Yeah, start your Babuda Rapo and avoid the method. No, 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 Eh. Hmm. So if you run, just run that. Yeah, you, you see thread is running and that one is now the, the thread which is actually running. And by just saying start, it doesn't mean that the, uh, the, the thread is going to be executed immediately. It will wait until it actually changes its state to the run to, to runnable. Cut out yam runnable, which means do time you run CPU time. I'm sure we were talking about parallelism, a uh, starvation, what what the that's where it comes here. When you when you start the thread, doesn't mean that it is going to be executed at that time. It wait until it is given the, the CPU time. Like this, what you call CPU scheduling. You are going to do it when you are doing operating system. This what you call CPU scheduling is the is, is is when the CPU actually tries to give a time to each and every process or to each and every thread which you be executing. So test it thread maybe talk not but my algorithms my algorithms are not there there are a lot of algorithms which are which which can be used for for CPU scheduling. So we can say those who have, those who have come first then get CPU <laughs> time first or we can use maybe uh, last in, first out. You can use any algorithm that can work there. There are a lot of algorithms which are used for CPU scheduling. So when you just say start, it's not going to run immediately. It will wait until it is given. It's time to execute, and then it will execute. So you can use maybe the, 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 the synchronization so that you can actually give the order of execution to threads. You can use priority scheduling so that you can give the order of execution. You can try to control the order so that you can minimize such e such issues that we are talking about of corruption data or maybe uh, uh, the, 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 the update loss or whatever. There, there are some problems that comes with that on threads. OK, so I think you, there you can demonstrate by having just go on the thread class uh, on the thread class, yes, inside the run method, you can have a for loop, which you just print maybe uh, from one to 10, just have a for loop inside the a for loop, which you print from one to 10, just do it quickly. Just put in the eye there, your eye is not declared, so it will give you an error. Okay. You can just say int i, okay, you can declare it up there, or you can just say for int i is equal to zero, then you, Blah 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 blah. It's simple as that. I'm sure. Just put it there. I must be less than what? Less than five. 
I, I just want from one to ten. So put I one is to equal ten. to one. Yes. So put I is equal to one there. I is equal to one, so that you don't need to do some manipulation inside. Okay. I is equal to one, and I less than or equal to ten. Okay, so let me just. I is equal to one. Yes, and less than or equal to ten. Less than or equal to ten. Yes, and then inside, <laughs> ju just print. Uh, Plus just I. Yeah, just print I there. Just print I inside the run method. Also, just say thread dot, just say thread dot, this thread from the class. I'm sure you can get the name of the thread which you're actually executing. I'm sure you can get that. And not threads, just say this dot. This, this dot. Yes, this dot, and the small letter. This dot uh, get, I'm sure this get name or something like that. Yeah, get name. Yeah, they just get name. And then just concatenate it with I there. Just say plus, and then you put maybe some space there. Uh, in quotes, just some space, and then you put I there. I just want to have a space between the name of the thread and then. I outside the quotes. Yes, you can put I yeah, I outside the quotes. Just put a plus again in between the, the quotes and also inside the quotes put a just a one one space or two space two space. Yeah, just like that. So we just want to make sure that when thread is running this method, it will actually give us the name of the thread and then it will and then it you it it you give us the values of i. So inside the, the make sure you save you save there so that whenever you're running the test class, I'm sure uh, it you get the current method. So go on the test class there. Make sure that you before object obj one dot start. Uh, you can just on top of just set its name. Set its name. I'm sure you can say oh. And not not the and what in just in between those two lines of code which are inside the main method. Okay. Just in between, yeah. yeah. So obj1 dot. I'm sure there's the set name there. So all these methods they are already there in the thread class. It's just there to use the set name. I'm sure you're seeing it. So in the course, just say maybe thread one or T one, just like that. That's the first thread there. Inside the so re remove the now the remove the now which is there, and then put the quotes and say maybe T one with the capital letter T there to say it's thread one. So just execute run. I just want to see the output there. You see, we've got T1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so reduce the, 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 the loop maybe to three, to three loops. Just put it from 10, instead of 10, just put three there. And you can just save. You say just save. Okay, so go on to the test and create another thread. And create another thread. So create my thread obj2 and then new my thread do it quickly obj1 obj2 so yeah let's go to new my thread and then you set its name to to t2 then you say dot start i just want to look at your case yeah. I just want you to notice the behavior of threads. Since you might get across the question which you'll be asking you uh, about the behaviors of threads, use set name. So there are a lot of methods which are in the thread class. If you look at all those methods, they are already in the thread class. So you need to get used to all those methods. So say T2. And then just go no 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 just go after obj1 dot start and then you started the, the 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 second thread yeah just the obj2 dot start just want you to notice that there are some behavior 
which is not guaranteed and there are some behavior which are guaranteed and then just execute that one. So if you look at that one, yeah, just wait a little bit. If you started the, 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 the first thread, right? It's the one that we've actually started to, to, to start. It's the first one. And then the second one, which is the second thread, is, is actually going to be executed second. But if you look at the output, that's what for runner footage two. No. Okay. So, so if you look at the output there, data executed the, the first thread, right? And then yes. the, 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 the first thread, uh, the, the first thread to execute was the second thread. If you look at the output, T21, T23, T23, uh, T22, T23, just like that. But if you look at, at our code, Tatutanga would execute the first thread there. And then the last thread, which was supposed to execute uh, last, is the one which I've actually executed it first. Okay. So the fact that we have started to start this trade it doesn't mean is is the one which is going to start first. So it's not guaranteed that if if you start this trade uh, first is the one which is going to get CPU time. We're going to turn auto execute and we're going to pay to execute. So it's not guaranteed. It's up to the CPU schedule, which will be actually giving the time. If you wanted to actually execute first, you, there are some methods like the join method, or you can give priority to that thread so that it can execute first before other threads can execute. So that's what one that's what I wanted you to notice there. Yeah, I think you say. Yeah, so uh, because I I have a lot of students who who, who have that uh, actually that challenge to spot who, what is guaranteed and what is not guaranteed on threads behavior. You can actually execute again. I'm sure it will give you different output. You can execute again to give you different output. If you look at that T1 now is first and then T2 is actually the last one. You can if it can actually mix. You can actually try to run it again. It can actually mix sometimes. Yeah. Yes, now T T1, T2, 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 T1, T1. T1, T1. So talk about this thread, rumbo P what time? Then rumbos chimbomira cause pana aku staff are pans, umbo pi what time are threads, umbos chimbomira panama. So it's up to the scheduler now. The behavior is not actually the same. If you want it to 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 behave in some certain way, there are some ways you can restrict that. You can go on to look on that, you can use the join method, you can use the priority. The priority schedule, um, the, the the priority schedule, where you can set the priority for some three so that they can execute first. So take note that uh, you can start the thread, but it, uh, the term that is it is not the term that it is going to execute is not guaranteed. You do not know if it is not if it is going to execute or not. But what you know is that maybe sometime it is going to execute. But it's not guaranteed that it is going to execute first, or it is going to actually execute. Remember, there are deadlocks, there are starvation problems, such kind of things. Yeah. So, so that's what I wanted you to get there. So, also you need to understand that if you use priority, it is guaranteed that the thread with the highest priority you always first execute before those threads with what? Uh, okay. with, with low priority. You need to know that. But maybe you need to understand also that higher priority, that it doesn't mean that it, it have got a higher number. Like you can assign some priorities from 1 to 10 for threads. But you find out that if you are saying it have got higher priority, it doesn't mean that you see thread that about 10 dollars you're to execute. Threads now one door near the higher higher priority because door is number one something like that. So it is guaranteed that the thread with higher priority is going to execute before the other one, which of course lesser priority. You need to understand that. Okay, you say. Just like that, so you can go on and read. You can find out there's so much interesting uh, info on these threads. And you can do a lot of things with these threads. Since we are in this era of mod processing parallelism, uh, concurrency, if you look uh, at our computers now, you say, I want Core i5, 
I want Koi, uh, Koi 6, I want uh, Koi, what is it, 11, I uh, want 11, the generation, what, what, blah, blah, blah. What you are going after is parallelism. So that maybe you can have 20 processes executing at the same time. I'm sure you, it will be very much interesting when you are doing uh, operating systems, when you'll be doing uh, parallelism there. When you'll be doing CPU scheduling there, so that you get to understand how these processors work. You appreciate uh, threads in Java. Since you can produce softwares which can perform better by actually using maybe all the processors within the system rather than using just one process, which would be using maybe one uh, processor or one process or one, one process at a time. So, okay, thank you. I do. I don't know if you have something to add. Dagra, do you have something to add on threads? Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's been a bit of some code there, but I think our time is not allowing us to do uh, so. Bad. Only my time, I'm sure even group six cannot even present in our course. I need to do something else. I need to do something else. So I will share you another presentation on Wednesdays, but I really want to finish this. Uh, this presentation this week so that I can compile uh, your marks there. I can compare your marks. So I think uh, now we can take questions. We have some questions or some contributions. This is the time for you guys. Just ask some questions or contribute. Okay. If if there are no questions and contributions, uh, those groups who are still to present, uh, I'm sure we need to make sure that on Wednesday, which is the day after tomorrow, we do our presentations. Otherwise, it will be difficult for me to schedule another uh, day for you to present. So make sure that uh, also those we'll be presenting, I'll give you maybe. 30 minutes, I'll give you 30 minutes. So make sure that uh, you summarize your presentation so that it will be enough on 30 minutes to be, you can finish it within 30 minutes. Okay, so if there are no questions, thank you. We can quit a day. Okay. Have, a good, have a good night. Thank you, CSM Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm out.